Hello my lovely friends, this is Marta from Drop of Sunshine. Welcome on my YouTube channel. My friends, before I start, please let me just say a huge thank you to everyone who recently joined my channel. There's so many uh, lovely new friends who decided to join and subscribe. I'm super, super thankful for that. Now, yesterday I posted this quick video clip of this card on my Facebook page and many of you friends were asking how did I create those flowers? And because I still have some cut over pieces here, I've decided to show you step by step uh, tutorial in details to show you how am I going from that uh, to that. Uh, lastly, a couple more things I just want to say because there's so many new friends here in this uh, YouTube channel who subscribe. I have my own inspirational group and every Monday we are creating some Monday challenge where you can hop on and create some uh, clean and simple cards for using up your scraps this is the challenge mainly to play with some leftovers and rather than stacking them in the drawers or folders use up those scrap pieces those those leftover and create something nice this color this week the color we are playing with is the cream color and we're just going to be making some clean and simple cards out of it and first five friends who will post their card on the group they will receive a free downloadable file from me also lastly i just want to say i do have the buy me a coffee page where is over 40 free downloadable papers there so uh, please feel free to visit and to uh, grab some free papers for yourself this is my way of saying thank you for all your support for being here subscribing to my channel and um, you know being here with me on my crafty journey lastly to all new friends please say hi please say where are you watching from i would love to get to know you a little bit more and thank you once again for all your comments for all your likes i'm really super thankful uh, this is a huge help especially with every comment uh, this is a huge help for me to grow my youtube channel so i'm super thankful for that i am wishing you all a fabulous day and let's let's jump into the video My friends let's jump i'm gonna be making a real-time video rather than speeding up because i just want to explain you step by step on this process of flower ma making i am using this uh, foaming form and some dice i do have the dice here let me just grab a few of these these are by uh, apple blossom these are one of my favorite flower dice and i love the sizes of them now the trick to create the foam flowers is first and foremost to cut do i have some foam piece here so this is the foam uh, it comes in various uh, various thickness it comes in various colors as well uh, the thinner the foam is it's actually the easier to to foam your flowers but one thing you have to remember uh, the thinner the foam is the harder it's much more delicate so you need to be more careful when whenever you're shaping it now the clue to cut i am uh, the machine I'm using, this is actually the Gemini uh, die cutting machine I'm using. And what I do, and this is works for my machine, I always fold my piece four times. And let me just cut one for you actually. And I am placing the, uh, the die, I'll choose the smaller one. Uh, I'm gonna do that. And then I will maybe place the other one as well. Will that work? just to make sure I'm making the most use out of the, the piece. Now, make sure once you're folding, so uh, you have the whole die on your foam and then just place it. And the clue, whenever you're die cutting the foam, is never, ever, ever go back and forth with your machine because this is the foam, it's very stretchy. So uh, you're gonna have the wonky cut if you will go back and forth with the die. Uh, try on your machine whether it's cutting two layers three la layers i'm using the uh, gemini as i've mentioned and mine is cutting four layers no problem so let me just i have it track beside me on my rust box so i'm not gonna show you the machine uh, but i'm just gonna place it on my die cutting plate and i will just cut it 
just like that and as i've mentioned make sure once you fold your uh, your foam that all layers are even and then let me just run it through as you can see i have my uh, foam cut it and then i am just very gently uh, taking it out and um, making sure i'm just pulling it a little bit don't push too hard because you don't want to break your flower petals and some of them they are coming right off the other one you just have to um, you just have to gently release from this middle bits and if you tear it a little bit don't get stressed because once you're gonna be forming your petals uh, no one will ever see and I like to cut four of these because I usually use two or three per each flower so this way it saved me a job rather than uh, cut them one or two and as you can see if I have those little bits I can very easily tear them off from my flower and that's fine so I've got two four and then these ones as well they are coming right off and what i love about those uh, flower dies they are having this emboss line so this is also adding feature extra feature to to the design this one didn't cut really well but if i'll pull a little bit i am able to just take it out and rip off those little pieces as well so one more thing i forgot to say for uh, for my project today i will need some heat source and i have this very old iron uh, from my just home uh, you know uh, that was the the one i was using in a home and i've decided to bring it over to my craft room so that's my heating source i'm also what i like to do i also like to color my uh, my flowers i I feel like this is the additional step. You can do it, you can do it without, uh, but uh, I feel that once they are very gently colored, that really gives them a lot more, a uh, lot more nicer look. What we're gonna need for coloring is to have some baby wipe and some sort of the coloring medium. And the thing which I find the most, like working the most are either gelatos or the uh, blending chalks or the pastels so there's there's few different things you can actually use you can use the blending chalks i have this very very old i think they're like 10 years old or something and i have gelatos you can also use some inks let me grab a couple uh, depending on what the color you prefer uh, you can use some inks, you can also use some oil pastels as well. Do I have any oil pastels? I did have some. I do have the very inexpensive one uh, you can buy in any supermarket, but there's so many different things, coloring medium, that I'm sure everyone is having something already what you can use. And the forming form, uh, there's uh, you can buy it many places. I will leave you the link down below as well. Uh, so if you're interested you can buy a couple a couple sheets just to try and then any flower dye will be worth it. whatever you have i'm just gonna pluck my uh, not yet maybe uh, in a second uh, so that's heating up very quickly so any any flower dye will be working the only one thing i wanted to tell you uh, where do i have the dye oh it's here i was using that for my christmas decoration this type of the dice which are having really really narrow a uh, piece here beside the petal on the petal base they are not so great with the foam because the foam is very delicate it's stretchy so the thinner this piece is the easier it is to rip off your petals and it's harder to get through some stamens some pearls it's not not possible you can still use them but whenever you're uh, you're looking for the dies to use the best one especially if you're beginning your adventure is the one they have those like a wider piece and then florals now you can still uh, you don't have to use actually the dies you can very easily cut your own um, your own flowers to create your flowers doesn't really need to, to have a dies i do have the youtube video 
uh, which was replay from my live class when I was making these so you can watch that as well now what I like to do whenever I'm having the elements I kind of like to sort it a little bit so I'll know which sizes I have I usually cut a batch at once and they don't have to be the same you can use them mix and match and they'll be looking nice I'm just kind of sorting them by colors and this one I can still check whether it's all cut nicely and uh, so let's start and color them I do have some uh, baby wipes which I think it's working the nice and some of them let me just show you I will add some color maybe pinkish one and I can add the color to the center and this is a one which I really like to do as well especially with the uh, nice white color and what I like to do I always like to add my color on both sides because this is the three-dimensional flowers we are creating uh, then definitely it's worth to uh, to create something and what i'm gonna do i will actually show you one i'm gonna do with the color and this one the other one i'm gonna leave it plain so we've got one which is color one which is plain and you will see the difference and same here i'm gonna color a little bit maybe with gelato um, maybe a little bit with gelato and this time i'm gonna go over the edges and then you don't have to be super precise it's very easy and quick and it's very satisfying as well once i'm sure that once you will do your first or uh, second set of the flowers you will just love it now i'm just adding the color to the second pair and then i will leave one uh, without coloring and last but not least all these little ones uh, all these little ones which i really really like and i think they just look in fabulous with a little bit of the blue or something so it's up to you whatever you have really and you don't have to color them all so here i will just gently add the color to one side and leave another one and leave another one on color and this is gonna be looking lovely as well and as i'm saying you can leave them with the color or without and that's gonna be looking great now let me plug our heating tool uh, our heating tool our iron <laughs> So I'm putting the colors uh, aside and let's jump into the forming. For forming flowers, you will need some sort of the forming tool, which is always handy. And then what I like to use uh, is either some sponge. And for many years, actually, not many years, but for a very long time, I was using the back side of the kitchen sponge. So this is just a dishwashing kitchen sponge and then you can form your flowers like that but what i prefer uh, far more and i find it a lot more useful this is a cork board this is a very simple inexpensive cork board to pinning up some messages and uh, it has this nice condensed uh, foam on the back so i cut mine because they were bigger i've cut mine to the smaller size and i have the one Oh, I'll show you. <laughs> this is the old one. As you can see, it's well used. I'm still using that, but I've just uh, for uh, for the flowers, uh, I've picked up the new one. I'm still using that one whenever I do some stitching lines or something like that. So, my friends, let's start forming our flowers. I'm taking my tool, and this is please, please be careful. I'm setting the the hot settings here, and what I do. And I will show you the difference between the uh, uh, flowers which are formed and unformed. And what I do, I am placing my flower uh, on the uh, iron and very, very gently, uh, two, three seconds, you will see the flowers start curling. And once they curl up, I am just squishing the petals, just like that very gently squishing and rubbing on my palm just a little bit give it a little bit twist squish you just want to uh, beat them up a little bit so the more you're going to be working not too much 
you don't want to tear it but if you're going to be working a little bit on your petal uh, they will be looking more realistically now i'm doing this for the second flower uh, petal and then i will show you two how they look without any so this ones we're gonna do just a heat it up a little bit so once they curl i'm not doing anything else and i'm just pressing a little bit so this is gonna be a burr version no color no shaping and again i am just pressing it here and that will give you a little comparison what you can achieve by simply doing a little bit of the shaping and again another one i am very grabbing those uh, petals just making sure they are a little bit you know crinkle and then roll once or twice on my palm and here we go we've got something like that very very easy very quick and simple to do just be careful you don't want to like you know uh, get yourself burned so i'm having that rolling a little bit squeezing it and i'll leave it like that and then these ones the little ones i don't think they need really much rubbing uh, they do look nice for me just as they uh, are especially i like to add a little uh, pearl in between and you can do two things you can either uh, put them from this side or you can put them upside down and squeeze them from that side so you will have two different looks uh, on them and dependingly how you're gonna uh, you know use your flowers whether you're gonna be curl them up towards inside or turn them upside down and then press them like that so that will give you a different result let me just unplug the iron and i'm gonna turn it back up uh, back side towards from me because too many times i cut my hand when it was burning hot uh, but i'm good <laughs> but just be careful anytime you're doing that just be careful now i'm leaving these ones and what we have here the next job we have to do uh, when we have those uh, crinkled petals you just very gently open up the flower just like that and then stretch the petals but don't stretch them on the top stretch them from the bottom very very gently towards the the bottom and you can just get a get a feel now if you're gonna be starting i'm sure you're gonna rip one or two flowers at the beginning because everyone does it don't get yourself you know uh, too much stress just uh you can still use them if they're a little bit ripped just put them as a bottom layer no one will ever see uh, however uh, this will give you this a little bit feel how much strength you have to put you can also put, uh, help yourself with this forming ball and then just place it on the bottom base of the petal and gently gently push uh, a little bit so it's curved around your petal will curve around the uh, the ball and you can use different size of the balls uh, there's lots of different tools available i do have bigger somewhere but i've just played them i can't find them and <laughs> as usual nothing new if you watch my channel you do know i am on constant search for <laughs> for lost uh, supplies so let me know how is your craft room do you have like a gremlin living with you as well who's constantly misplacing your your bits because i don't know what's happening here in my room i'm just constantly on a search uh, now today <laughs> that's oh <laughs> i laugh and blow everything away uh today for example i was looking 10 minutes for the phone uh, to start this live uh, monday classes uh, no monday classes monday challenge draw for today's challenge and uh, i was looking for my phone for good 10 minutes and it was already on my <laughs> it was already mount to my uh, to my camera recorder like here because i'm i'm recording my videos from my phone so uh, for those of you who's been new here in my channel and you also thinking like of starting your own youtube channel i do have the video step by step uh, how am i recording how is my camera setup looks like i don't have a camera actually i'm recording everything with the help of my phone so uh, if anyone will will be looking for some information it 
such a video is on my channel as well so i'm very gently then i'm putting this ball in here and look on the how much difference straight away by adding a little pieces of the color and by doing some forming this is just incredible and the same here a pop of color it gives a lot more dimensional to to our petals now for the inside portion of the petals a few things we can use we can use some stamens i do have the whole bunch of them and another thing which I really, really like to use are those artificial berries. I find them the easiest way, especially at the beginning. If you are a beginner, uh, you don't have to wiggle with all the stamens, the berry. Uh, all you have to do is just to poke a hole here in the center of flower as I'm doing here and then just thread it through. They are already on the wire and then a dash of the glue and look on that and just oh putting it here just like that wrap around and my flower is basically ready within a minute i don't have to put much work in there so i find these ones are the best for flowers especially for the easy one flowers but for any other flowers i do like to use the flower stamens as well and there's a lot more things you can use as well you can use some buttons for example, I do have a button here um, and then you can glue the piece like that. So let me just show you that. We're going to do each flower a little bit different with a twist. So this will give you a little extra, you know, insight of what you can use, what you can do your flowers. And again, another beautiful flower, a little bit different than this one. And I had the other one which was oh, from the back side, yes. This one was pushed from the back. And again, I could use the berry here. Or for example, uh, what else I can use? Let me just have a look. Oh, here they are. I do have those little pearls. This is a regular half uh, pearl, which I'm sure many of you crafters already have in their studio uh, or your craft area, whatever you have. and then you can add something like that. And then for this one, for example, you can use two layers, obviously the same color, uh, but you can get a idea what I'm doing now for this one, the simplest one or this one. Let's do some stamens. Now, what I like to do, uh, I usually keep mine more organized, but I've, uh, <laughs> I've ruined the uh, white pack. Now, what I'm gonna do for my floral stamens. I will do, uh, I will grab a couple of them, several, uh, I don't even count, just a little bit here, just like that. And what I like to do, I am putting them in half and then adding a teeny tiny bit of the hot glue and be careful, don't burn yourself, just wait a second for the glue to cool down slightly and then I am just rubbing. And this way I have this little piece, which is, a little bit sturdy because of the hot glue this piece is a little bit harder so it's easier for you to poke it through the leaf uh, to the floral i'm making a hole in the center and then i'm pushing this little tool up towards the end so this way my hole is a little bit bigger as you can see and then what i'm doing i am threading this through here just like that and before I will add glue, I will make sure that it's actually completely thread through. Don't put the glue straight, uh, you know, at the beginning because you may find it. You still need to push a little bit and it's harder to do with the glue. And once I'm halfway through, I am opening up my flower a little bit. And then I just add a drop of glue here, drop of glue here. And then I am pulling and twisting my stamens a little bit once I'm pulling my uh, flower a little bit up and you can do it as much as you like you can put your stamens a little bit higher a little bit lower it's entirely up to you my friends now second one let me just do that again I am making sure I'm enlarging this hole a little bit so my flowers will nicely uh, the stamen will go through nicely I am putting it on and now the clue is to 
uh, put the flowers like um, overlap not overlapping exactly so they're gonna be in the middle uh, so they're not gonna be you know in the same position so you will see the bottom layer of the petals as well add a dash of the glue and then pull very gently uh, the the uh, petal and then do exactly the same in another spot and another one just a little dash of the glue and then pull it a little bit make sure that the fl uh, flowers the petals are off center and then just glue them up a little bit and here again a little bit i'm gonna stretch it to the side and we've got the beautiful form flower and because we color just the uh, you know this pop of the color in the center it's really adding the depth to the flower second one i will just do very simple instead of the stamens i will put the berry here so you will see the comparison and then i will add the berry you can mix and match actually you can add the couple of the stamens and berry inside so it's entirely up to you but i just want to show you different effect so i'm just pulling making sure the berry is nice inside and then the second one i'm making a hole a little bit and once i am gonna be gluing the second one i will offset the petals so i'm just making sure they are offset it nicely and then i am adding dash a glue in between the first layer of the petals and then i am pulling the second uh, layer so this way they are kind of a uh, offset and they're gonna be looking nicely and again a dash of a glue and i'm gently pulling squeezing here a little bit and then the third one over here just a teeny tiny bit of the glue and then pull the petal a little bit so they both glue together and you've got nicely offset flower so look on that by changing the petal uh, the petal by changing the berry to the stamens we do have totally different look and then let me just show you the one which we absolutely did not do any coloring any uh, shaping and i'm gonna add the berry here as well so this way it's still lovely it's still nice and beautiful and uh, i find all of the flowers looking lovely but i do prefer uh, whenever they are a little bit shaped because that's really changing uh, game and just make them you know uh, much more realistically looking so here we go i'm just gonna glue it a little bit just like that and then here making sure they're they're nicely offset and i'm pulling a little bit and just like that and maybe a little dash of glue here as well just to help offset these two a little bit okay and look on that so we've got flower without the shaping with the shaping and berry and then we've got the flower with the salmon so let me know which one is your favorite one and these are the little ones again made here as well i will link the other classes there as well which i was making um, a long time ago i don't even know when when it was probably a, one year ago something like that and then whew, for those of you who would like to stay a little bit longer with me i will edit the quick card so you could see how the card was made so uh i uh, thank you so much everyone who's been here who's joining me and subscribing please please don't forget to uh, say hi to leave a comment that's really huge help to me and also down below all the links to my free downloadable papers and also to the uh, group events and everything i will have a couple live classes this week as well so if anyone is fancy to join me craft together have a little chit chat then you are more than welcome so let's jump into making the card uh, part of the video 
So, my friends, for the card, uh, today's card, I will be using some of my digital papers as well as this die from the Apple Blossom. All of the links you will find down below and what I am creating. I wanted to create a kind of a DL size card, but I want it to be a little bit wider. So, instead of a 4 inches, I score my A4 size paper at 5 inch, fold it half, and then cut off the remaining bit. I am using a little piece of this peach color paper which i thought it's going really really nicely with the uh, design paper i have over here this comes from my uh, digital collection number two uh, this uh, this paper you can see over here and i am just trimming it to the size i don't measure anything as you can see i am just pencil marking the papers just making sure i have this white uh, border all around which is looking nice and I am gluing my paper uh, with the help of the double-sided tape and a dasha glue in the corners. I do like to add the glue even though I'm having the double-sided tape on the card because some tapes, they tend to dry with the time. I do have the piece of the chipboard and this wood uh, cutout uh, heart shape and uh, this is gonna be my focal point for the card. Unfortunately, I've made a little mistake. I would not call it even mistake, but uh, sometimes we do have some idea and once we put them into the action uh, it still now doesn't really look as as well as we thought uh, at first i wanted to uh, emboss this heart with the white color embossing powder which i did and i really really like how shiny and beautiful this heart was looking however once i put all my composition this heart which is supposed to be the focal point it's kind of disappears so uh, you will see later on i will be ripping it off from the card and kind of darken it up i add the piece of the white lace on the uh, card base uh, on the front panel and then I lift this front panel and add it to my card base by using a little drop, uh, drop of the foam tape. And now I am placing my uh, composition, this uh, green color and gray color leaves which you could see on the upper corner. These are my latest design collection, digital uh, collection number three, uh, which I have a bunch of them I cut. I didn't show you how to create those flowers because we just cover it up in the first part of the video so i'm just quickly pulling all the composition together and this is my favorite uh, part of every card making process is just adding those little bits i'm always like to not always but many occasions i like to uh, finish my cards with adding some nouveau drops and here as you can see once i was adding those drops i thought oh this card really this heart it's not standing out as much as i would like it i now see that i really would much prefer to have it in this raw wood color uh, but the one i have on the right this is a slightly bigger and doesn't fit this uh, little chipboard frame i have so the help came in with uh, from uh, the another uh, embossing powders and i use a little drop of this pump pumpkin uh, pumpkin glow i think oh i can't remember the color this is from the very old company uh, let me just have a look this is um mm, where do i have it it's never there when i need it oh here we are so it's a golden pumpkin embossing powder from the moon glow company and once i put it on i also add a dash of the brown color and um, ink and that's my card that's finish off my card and i feel that once i darken up this heart it's looking a lot better i will show you in a second all the close-up look on the card and i hope you will enjoy it so here is the close-up look on a card i've made yesterday and also a photo of the flowers we were making today i hope you enjoyed this video and find some value over there and if you do please don't forget to leave a like and a comment thank you so very much everyone i'm wishing you all a fabulous monday and see you shortly Bye bye